Oh wait. Okay, I think we're live. I am waiting for Michael to log in. Where you at, Michael? Is it you? Is it me? Say it's us. Babe, jump in the Cadillac. Yeah, let's put some miles on it. Anything you want, just to put a smile on it. You deserve. There he is. Dude, I can't hear you. <laughs> just mouth the words. Just mouth whatever. Go ahead. Let's just do it this way. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, totally. A lemur? That sounds like a really weird pet to have in Chicago. That's really, really strange. I don't understand it. Um, Abby says, I agree. I don't know. What, oh, I'll agree. Okay. What are you agreeing about, Abby? Tell me what you're agreeing about. Hold on. I need to make sure this is all broadcasting properly. I should probably turn this music off because Facebook does not like when you play licensed music. Abby, can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure this thing is streaming as it is supposed to be streaming before we dive in. Replay viewers, thank you so much for being here. Live viewers, you are my faves. Okay, um, let's see. This is not broadcasting on. My... How about now? Can you hear me now? Hey, I hear you and I see you. Woohoo! Go oh, see so right. Oh, Abby says the song I was singing along. Oh, I'll agree. Okay. And Marion says, yo, okay, cool. So that's working. Now, the only thing is I just need to make sure this is actually like, well, obviously it's streaming because people are watching. Let me just make sure. Um, do something really cool and talented for a minute, Michael, until, uh, until I verify this. Um, okay. So it's not showing up on my timeline, but obviously it's out there because, oh, yeah, no, there's people here. Okay. What the... What the hell, Zuckerberg? That that's become my new mantra for life, Michael. Is I just say, "What the hell, Zuckerberg?" That's my what did that's he do my thing. He he's just such a beautiful man, and I just love him so much. I love that you're dancing. This is great. Okay, okay, it, it is working. Okay, hold on a second. Um, okay, all right. He's just such a beautiful man. Oh wait, okay, hold on. Now we're getting. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Oh God. Okay. All right. I don't want to hear myself. Okay. This is. I don't usually use Be Live. Have you used it before, Michael? Nope. First time. Okay, sweet. We are popping our cherries together. Okay, so let me, again, let me just make sure everybody that's on the uh, live call right now, I love you so much, and just keep watching Michael's beautiful face while I uh, while I get this figured out. Okay, so it's not showing up on my actual um, Facebook timeline, but that is okay because it's obviously showing up somewhere because people are there. Uh, let me just see if it shows up over here, and if it does, we are goal den. All right, hold on a second. Let me just see. I want to put the music back on, but they get really, they're, they're total jerks. Um, oh, copyright and stuff. Yeah, dude, totally. Like, and to me, it's like, okay, so I used to be a rapper, right? So I'm like, dude, share my music everywhere because you're just helping me get more notoriety. And everybody knows that Bruno Mars would be nothing without me. So I just, <laughs> I just, why are you laughing at that? This is like, this is serious. I don't I'm understand. Laughing because Kristen, Kristen's my wife loves Bruno Mars. And that song that you were playing, yeah. like really anytime it comes on, and she's got way, way more swag than I do. But she, <laughs> she gets like a <laughs> Bruno Mars, but I'm sure she looks just like that, only way way better. Uh, okay. so um so cool. So let me uh this looks good. All right, uh cool. We got people coming in. Shana says yo yo yo. Jen says see and hear you both. She's not saying if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh Marion says Abby, what's up? You hung out with Emma. You know what, Marion? This is not the place to have conversations with people. You don't come here to my Facebook live and talk to your friends. I'm just kidding. No. I love all of you. I'm so happy you're here. So guys, welcome. Thank you so much for showing up and being here today with me and my homeboy, Michael Balshan, who I admittedly had to ask how to say his last name because I would have been like Balchan and Ball and Chain and Balshan, and I would have made you sound either Shishi and, and Fru Fru, or I would have made you sound like a hick from a trailer park. So I'm glad that I know how to say it now. <laughs> cool. Can um, I tell you about this book I've been reading lately? What's this book you've been reading? Oh, it's so awesome. It's just like... Oh, that book sucks. I have that book too. It's up here on my shelf and it, I, it just stays there. I've never read it because it's just, I've heard it's so shitty. 
<laughs> no, dude, I, I appreciate that so much. And so, so I want to just take a minute. I, I want to dive right in because people are here and I respect their time. We respect their time a, a little bit, like not like we don't like respect your time. Like it's a big deal, but, but we, we love you guys enough that we're going to, we're going to do this. Um, so let me hide this comment. What? Like, Marion's like taking over our stuff here. Uh, Teresa says, are you combing your hair? Oh, yes. For anybody who is already in Playful Prosperity, Michael, did you see the video that I posted this morning? No. Okay, is it all right. So I posted a video with like no gel in my hair and like I had it like it was just a big poof. And so everybody that's in Playful Prosperity that is here now, look, the helmet JG is back. You can all calm the F down. Okay. Awesome. So um, what I want to do before we dive in here is really just kind of uh, introduce Michael to, to people who may not know him. If you don't know him, you've been missing out big time in your life. Uh, and I feel really sorry for you. And if you need a, a reference to a coach or a therapist, I will help you. Um, but what I want to do is introduce you to Michael because Michael is just one of these dudes. Dude, I don't even know how long we've been connected. I feel like it's been a couple of years that we've been like connected on Facebook and stuff. Maybe not that long. What do you think? Um, I don't even think that long. So I, I, I first really saw you on when you did the ever coach, um, summit the one day kind of thing yeah. loved it. and then izzy connected us i think six or nine months later that's probably what it was izzy yeah izzy's a badass too um so 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 happy that we're connected and michael is just somebody and we talked about this actually on on the last live coaching call we had for for playful prosperity is that michael is somebody who is such a good supporter and celebrator and lover of people and and it's not that's not that's not as typical of a way of being in the world as people may think to genuinely just have such a huge heart and to genuinely have this spirit of service be a part of how you show up in the world as much as Michael does. And he's not, it's not a strategy. He's not, he's not, try, it's very easy to see when service is being used as a strategy and when somebody really is just a, a servant in the world and, and loves to help people flourish in whatever way he can. And he's so, so good at that. And I just so admire and honor you for the man that you are, for the smile that you have, for the support that you've given me, and for the, and for the, the the true difference you make in people's worlds just by being in their sphere. So so I just want to thank you for that, dude. Oh man, can you tell how awkward it is for me to say anything <laughs> when you see that? It's like, like ah! uh, no, I, I I really it means a lot. Um, thank you, and and I, I wish that were the default. Like, why can't we all <laughs> celebrate each other and like like love each other and and well, yeah. Too far there. <laughs> no, 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 but you're right. I mean, that, that's true. I posted a quote and I always forget the quote. I got to find it again. But I posted some quote of, of like a week or so ago and it was talking about it was me sharing something about me like that. I won an award and I'm, I'm the same way, dude. Like I like it's so hard for me to accept praise. So as awkward as you felt receiving it, it felt great. It fucking amazing to give it to you. But if that was turned the other way, I'm a total deflector. I'm like a total like shoulders up. Oh, but that person's even better. Go talk to them. Like I, I'm not good at accepting praise. So I think you did a really good job. But there was something that I saw in this quote and it said something, it was something to the effect of like, I long for a world where, uh, where celebration is as accepted as criticism, right? And and it's like, because it really feels like celebration is not our default. Like, you're so right. And that's not what we're here to talk about, but it's so true and it needs to be said. So I'm glad you said that. Cool. Let's make it. Let's yeah, make cool. it. yeah, exactly. Let, let's go first, right? Let's go first. So so Michael is in Chicago. Michael does all kinds of really cool stuff in the world. And, and I'm learning more and more about him all the time. And every time I learn something new, I'm just like blown away again. So, so do, can you take just a couple minutes and talk about kind of, who you are, what you're up to in the world, and, and just kind of share a little more of your goodness with us just at a high level or a low level or a mid level or whatever fucking level you want. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to try and make it super short. Um, no, screw it. Do whatever you want. Okay. Well, I'm 30 years old, live in Chicago, doing my best to just live my life in a way that I'm proud of um, and just just being this this channel for love and wisdom and abundance and, and kind of have all my interactions be just coming from this place of pure love and positive energy. So that's a super, super high level. Yeah. Um, professionally, I, I work with inspired leaders. So I, I help them sleep at night satisfied about what they accomplished that day. Mm -hmm. And also be excited to wake up the next day and just to do and to serve and to be a little bit better. Uh, so this combination of, of gratitude for everything that we have and that we've done and, and pride in what we've accomplished um, and still wanting to, to improve and do more and do more. So um Use executive coaching modalities, a lot of different psychology and personal growth and uh, the gamut. I, I spent 
So I was a, an options trader, gold and, uh, gold and oil commodity options for seven years. Wow. Uh, and spent a long, uh, all my like nights and weekends, basically like reading, taking online courses, 350 books, 350 book summaries, 80 online courses, like you name it. I, I studied it, astronomy, quantum physics, uh, the psychology of play and like Excel wizard. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and just am trying to to unleash all of that into the people and the projects that I'm excited about. I love that. Yeah, so that's, that's high level. I have a dog. That, that was my wife that she got in college and married her, to her for five and a half years. She's amazing. She's so, wild. So the dog or to your wife? How, you've been married to which one for five well, years? Both of them, I guess. Um, but but he, he's here with me. So um, be good, Gus. Gus. This is Gus, yes. Gu, and Gus is a squirrel chaser, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Gus, Gus is, we'll give you a quick shot of Gus to yeah. show you how active the Gus oh. is. Gus, 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 chill, chill, chill. Gus, calm down. See, it's it's too much. It's too much energy. It's too early in the day for this. Just chill out. Can't, can't handle it. <laughs> so that's me. That's that's amazing. I love that. And so it's I love it because immediately. So I learned something new about you too with the options trading. I didn't know that. So immediately, I think it's really easy to see people like you who seem really naturally enthusiastic and joyful and playful and happy. And to, to say, oh, well, that person, that's just the way they are. It's the way they've always been. And, and maybe you have, but being an options trader is not something I would consider being the most playful, enthusiastic, joyful, soulful, fulfilling kind of kind of position. And, and, and maybe it is for some people. That's fine. But but it's it's important, I think, for people to see that, like, it doesn't matter what you're doing in the world, what your, your profession is. Um, that playfulness is something that is a part of your being. So were you this playful, enthusiastic, joyful person while you were doing the options trading or, or how did that work? Um, no, I mean, for periods, for sure. Um, but it, it, it's it's a practice. Right. So it's not something that was just like and I had a little pop up. My phone had a FaceTime pop up. I don't know if that made it freeze. Uh, yeah, you did freeze. I mean, let's see if uh, oh, but you're back. You're back. Cool. Um, so, yeah, it's like it's practice. And actually, my so I recognized last year. So the beginning of 2016, the beginning of every year, I, I set a couple of intentions for the year of like the energy that I want to cultivate. Mm -hmm. um, and I recognized that that playfulness was one thing that had been missing. Um, and it, I, I, I was, you know, playful as, as a child and all the way kind of through college. But it went away. Um, and I really wanted it back. So I made playful my theme of the year and is really constantly like, I want to, to bring more play into my life. Um, and then, and then practice that I'm all about practice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you really, I mean, you really have to be right. It's like, it's, you know, the, the insights and the understandings are great. But if you don't do something with it, then it's kind of just adding knowledge to knowledge, adding information to information, right? Let me um, let me real quick. Do I need? I'll, I'll just dance. We'll do a dance break. We'll do a dance break. And he's back. Okay, he's back. Did that is it? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're perfect. Um, you are always perfect. Uh, so so no, but but I love that. And so so the the interesting thing about that too is that. There are activities that you can undertake to be more playful, right? And 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 I remember this in the thing that you actually wrote about your playfulness. You know, you were going to chase more squirrels with Gus, and you were going to you know host parties at your house, and you were going to do you know do more things that let you up. And I think that that's amazing. And I think there's another side of this that is is really important for people to recognize is that this is much more what what I think you and I are talking about, it and kind of the entire theme of playful prosperity is that we can live in the spirit of play. Right. It's not it doesn't mean you have to be because I, I know. And the reason I'm saying this is I know there are people who will hear this and start tuning out and say, oh, yeah, but but yeah, you're a coach or you're an entrepreneur or you're a whatever. So play is accessible to you. And I've heard from other people that are like, you know, I'm in a um, was this somebody in the group? I don't know if it was somebody in the group or, or somewhere else that said like, oh, but I, I was in the hotel industry and everything had to be very, you know, by the book and, and you had to follow all these rules and you had a certain uniform. And so I get it. I'm not saying to walk into your corporate office and start shooting people with Nerf guns uh, or throwing water balloons unless you were going to quit anyways. And then it's like, fuck, yeah, that's the way to go. But but that's that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there is a lens through which you can see the world where you either choose to be really serious or you choose to be lighter and more playful. So has that been your experience of playfulness in your world? Yeah, um, 
Certainly. And I, I think just like I've, I've heard before, like play is our natural state. Like you, you watch kids like they're playing all the time um, and they, they generally look look pretty joyful. And like you ask most people what they want. Oh, I want to feel happy. I want to feel joy. And play is a way to cultivate that and like live that joy. And it's, um, you know, option training. There's like a lot of structure. Um, there were things that 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 were serious. But it's it's who are you going to show up as knowing that like that's the structure and not necessarily like always pulling jokes or whatever. But there was also a place for that because, um, you know, Pomodoro, it's just productivity technique where essentially like we need little energetic resets of five minutes every half hour or 10 minutes every hour, whatever. And it's so funny. So one of um, I know a company here in, in Chicago and they just moved office space and I went and hung out with, with was hanging out with them and I actually sent them that so they had keys for the restroom like they would when they came back they would like toss the key behind their back and try and land it on a window ledge so I sent them a little mini basketball hoop um and so like they started like shooting the keys of the basketball hoop. and then of course they had like the basketball um but having then it became like okay every once in a while they're they're, they're taking a break and they're shooting the little basketball but yeah. that actually energetically resets you so that you're able to like do your work higher so you're not just like oh i'm dragging out all day but like no i'm gonna take a little bit of a break play move dance like have fun and then oh i'm, I'm ready to get back and do some some good work so both both in the sense of showing up in a spirit of play and in the sense of like i'm gonna take breaks <laughs> take playful breaks yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's I think that's super important, and and we do you know I think we take our our work and, and I'll speak for myself we take our work very seriously sometimes, and so it can be hard to think that playful is is actually helpful. So this has been my work is and it's it's the reason why I'm so passionate about this work now is that I feel like we have been sold and told our entire lives that we have to be serious to be successful, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's kind of, you know, all the stuff that I, that I really talk about now. And it's, and it's one of the reasons I love you so much is because I really feel like you, you get that and you show up in that way saying like, listen, this doesn't have to be so serious. And it's not, it's a, it, it can be a very simple shift in your mindset. And, and there, there's a question that, that I use a lot. And that I'm sure I've already brought into playful prosperity at least seven or eight times. And there's this question that I always ask is how can I play with this? Right. How can I play with this is like, one of my favorite questions, because it, it essentially says no matter what you are being faced with in the world, no matter what challenge, no matter what opportunity, no matter what level of stress is showing up in your world, there is some way you can play with this. And until we ask that question, how can I play with this? It's like there, there's this uh, I, one of my one of my mentors talked about um, how there is a there. There are three types of people. There are um, no fun people. There are some fun people and there are all fun people. Right. And, and the no fun people, they are just completely dictated by all their circumstances and all the, the, the things that are going on in their world. And they're constantly, actually, they don't even think there's an opportunity to have fun. They're done, right? They're just like, these are like the, you know, the nihilists and, and uh, whatever. Then there's the some fun people, which I think that I've probably been the majority of my life as a some funner. Some funners, they get that like their, their thoughts kind of control what's going on in their world. They, they dictate their experience of life. And, and they get that and they do their best to cultivate thinking and actions that help them. But in a sense, they still are kind of waiting for a certain circumstance to happen so they can think something's fun. And then the all fun person is the exact same as the some fun person. They just don't have the mental chatter in their head that shit should be different. Right. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, this I'm not going to ask, like, if this is enjoyable, I'm going to ask how this is enjoyable. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and I love that that. How, how can this be fun? Or, or I don't remember the exact way that you yeah, How can I play with this? How can this be fun? Can with this? That? Yeah. One of the, um, one of the things through that year of, of, of playfulness is like watching my language change. Mm -hmm. So now like I don't work on things. I don't, it's like, Oh, I'm playing with this. Like I'm currently playing with this. Like I'm playing with this idea. I'm playing with this mindset. I'm playing with this new, this new structure. Um, and just like the shift of making it be like, Oh, like I've got to do things this way. Like, no, I'm, I'm kind of playing around with this. It's working or it's not working. Um, and that's, that's one big piece. And there's something else that, that, um, yeah, maybe it'll, uh, no, I, I dig that. And, and people that are, that are on the live right now, I appreciate you all being here and let us know what are your questions about playfulness? Like, you know, the biggest thing that I feel like is that there's still maybe a taboo around playfulness. 
mm-hmm. right? Like there's some like, there's some, again, it's this belief that we have to be serious to be successful. What were you going to say? Yeah, well, I think there's a big distinction between like taking things as a joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people think like, if I'm not taking it seriously, then I'm taking it as a joke. And that's not the case. It's like, how am I showing up in this serious thing with a mindset of like, like, playfulness um, or or, or joy or fun. And it is so funny because we are taught that like we need to be serious to be successful. And in in my experience and what I've seen with with so many of my clients too is like when you relax that, when you show up and and like with this this looseness, um, you're actually more successful, which I think is like the whole point of playful prosperity. It's right. Like, like show up in this way and then watch the magic unfold. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's been so, it's been such a, an interesting thing for me because it's, it's been really hard for me to really talk about what it is I'm teaching in playful prosperity. And what I finally realized is that I'm teaching all the things that I care most about, but they're all being taught through the lens of what if we were more playful? What if this was all easy? What if, and how can I play with this? Uh, you know, one of my favorite questions that I, I ask clients a lot is it's kind of a question slash statement is you say that like it's a bad thing, right? So they say something and I say, you say that like it's a bad thing. And immediately, immediately we have no choice because our brains short circuit and go, what do you mean? You say that like it's a bad, there's another option. And immediately, like we can't, even if we don't know what it really could mean, our brains start to short circuit a little bit. And it's like, it's recognizing that for me, at least when I talk about playful prosperity, when I talk about play or a spirit of play or any of those things around play, the the actions of being playful and dancing and doing all this stuff is totally a part of it. And the other part of it is knowing that we can play with the interpretations of what's going on in our world, right? That that everything in the world is material for improv, right? No, that material for improv is a great is a great line. But even something that you just said there, like really hit home for me and like, um, we, we can play with, and it's, it's that like, it's fixed versus, versus growth or like the world is this way versus these are things that are happening. And how do I want to interpret them? How do I want to see them? Like, it's not, this is how, as it is, but it's, what's the lens that you're bringing to it. And can you play or experiment with that, that, that lens? Um, p- playfulness has a fluidity to it, right? A spontaneous mm-hmm. fluidity that, yeah. that, even just that, like, like, yeah, I don't know. That that was a really that hit home for me in an interesting. Yeah, I, I love that. And somebody and somebody just left a comment too. Um, uh, Teresa was saying that she she really liked that reframe, the work on this becoming playing with this, and and, and I love that too. And it makes me it reminds me of this thing. If, you may have heard of this before. There's this um, Japanese uh, uh, principle, and I'm probably going to butcher the the pronunciation, but I think it's called aso based kotoba. Have you heard of this before? Maybe <laughs> it, 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 sounds, it sounds like something that's like in process cereal or something. Yeah. We got a little bit of yellow 14, a little aso based Katoba. Um, so what aso based Katoba is, is a language shift um, that originated in Japan where, where you essentially anything you do, you are playing at that thing. Right. So you don't, you don't uh, prepare for a speech. You play at preparing for a speech. You don't have a sales call with a potential customer. You play at having a sales call with a potential customer. And it's like you you basically, the way I interpret it is you step into a role, right? It's like all day, every day, we're playing adult dress up with the mind anyways, right? And it's our choice of do we dress up as a villain or as a horror figure or as a grotesque monster? Or do we play adult dress up in the mind where we dress up as a superhero? or we dress up as a comedian or an improv expert or Sherlock Holmes. Like we're playing a dull dress up of the mind all the time. We can choose who we dress up as. To me, that's a spirit of play. Yeah. I, and and um, for some reason I'm, I'm thinking of football, professional football or professional athletics in general. Like yeah. you, you play sports and for people that are really successful, right. To get into this flow state, they can't be in their head. And, and when you're, when you're playing, you're not in your head. You're, you're just, you're, you're naturally, you're, you're flowing. And like, that's what allows them to be, to be, to be, the, you know, great at what they do. Yeah. Huh. Well, and you, brought, you brought up a really good point too. And I think it directly ties into what you're talking about with sports is, is the serious stuff, right? The serious nature of stuff. And that people think, a lot of people think the opposite of serious is taking things as a joke. 
And, and that's and that's really important. I wanted to circle back to that because I thought that was a really good point. And and what I'll say about that is that what I've done is I've changed my definition. So my definition now of, of the opposite of serious is actually sincere, right? So I can be not so serious. I can instead be super sincere about what I'm doing. Like it matters to me. I want to show up and do a great job. I want to be of service to people. And it doesn't have to be such a significant thing in my world. I can be very sincere about what I'm doing without it having to be overly significant. And and what came up for me, I was doing a, a training for a company um, in California a month or two ago. And, uh, and, and this analogy came in my head, which is so funny because I don't follow sports at all. Like as soon as you said professional sports, I started thinking about like my shopping list. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So uh, I don't follow sports at all. And especially like NASCAR, I'm just, I, I don't follow it at all, but I've seen the inside of NASCAR, you know, uh, inside the car while they're driving, right? I've seen what that looks like. And to me, they, they completely embody what I believe is, is a sincere, relaxed, playful, committed devotion to the work they're doing. And, and the reason this came up for me is because somebody was saying like, I don't understand, somebody in, in the audience there was saying, I don't understand how we could possibly be relaxed and still be motivated to do the work that we need to do. That's one of the biggest objections I come up against, especially in corporate environments. When I talk about living a not so serious life or being more playful, they say, no, but I need the anxiety to motivate me. I need the fear to, of being fired to motivate me. I need the stress to motivate me. And of course, in my super coachiness, I ask him, have you ever tested that? Like, can you know for sure? I get all Byron Katie on him and then they shut down. But, but so, so anyways, back to the NASCAR example. So this example came to my head is that if you think of NASCAR drivers, they're driving these, you know, these huge pieces of machinery, these heavy pieces of metal, and they're going, I don't know, 200 miles an hour around a track for hours and hours at a time. And if they make one wrong move, they could not only lose the race and potentially destroy their car, but they could die and or kill somebody else, okay? A tad bit more stressful than what I do on a daily basis, I would totally say easily. Now, here's the question though. Do you think they could do that for hours on end if they were gripping the steering wheel so hard that like all the blood was just rushing to their knuckles constantly for four or five hours at a time. You think they could actually grasp the steering wheel and you can't see, I'm sure on the camera, but like I am with all my might making a fist and it's been eight seconds and I feel like my hands are going to fall off, right? Do you think they could actually do sincere committed work being like this for five hours straight? And, and my guess is no. So they <laughs> Well, yeah, not well, exactly. And that's the same thing with us. Like we can do that for a little bit of time. And this is why I'm so kind of against the hustle movement and the like sleep when you die and sleep is for the week and, you know, hustle, hustle, hustle. It's great if it works for you. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying for me, I can't sustain that. So the NASCAR example is essentially saying I can be super sincere and devoted and focused and making sure that I see what's going on around me and totally in flow and totally, you know, in, in, in my body and in my, my moment of whatever I'm doing. And I can have more of a relaxed grip on the wheel so that I don't have to waste all of my creative and physical energy holding on to this wheel. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Um, and my screen froze and I don't know if, 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 if I'm still there, cool. You're still, you're good. No, you're good. Okay. Um, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. And, and it even, I think the other distinction too, is that like, they're playful in the car, but they prepared a ton, right? They're not just like showing up and like, right. yeah, I'm going to jump in the car. And like, like they put in a ton of preparation and, and various degrees of, of, of sincerity in the preparation, right? Or like thinking about I'm, I'm playing with preparing for it. Um, but there's there's a lot of preparation that goes into it, so it's not like this. Um, Bruce Lee, I love Bruce Lee, super brilliant dude, um, and he talks about like another I don't know Japanese I don't think Japanese anyway, uh, like beginner's mind right of like the, people talk about having beginner's mind in the way that a child is just just acting spontaneously whatever, and then this long period of training. So like let's say you're getting into a fight you've never been in a fight before. Like you're going to do okay because you're just like reacting. But if you start thinking, oh, I got to like avoid this punch this way. And then I'm, and then you think, then you get punched in the face. So there's this beginner's mind, like training. And then the goal of all the training is to get back to that spontaneous, not thinking about it. They call it Wu Wei, this like non-action action that like, well, I don't know what that means, but, but 
Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. 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 A couple, a couple, a couple comments. comments. Check, check. So, so Jen, Jen, this is, you, are you having, do you hear the feedback? Um, yeah. Okay. Testing, it's testing. It's better. It's better. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Jen says, I feel like today's climate uh, values seriousness. It's so conditioned towards depression and cynicism that when people are around very happy, fun and lighthearted people, they think there's something wrong with them or they are on something. Let's start a happy revolution. Hashtag bring happy back. Yeah. So and, and this is this is why I think and this is something I've never shared before, but it just came to me actually right before our call um, is. Being in a state of play or being in a spirit of playfulness or living in a playful state, not necessarily, again, walking into the office and shooting people with Nerf guns, but having this lighter, not so serious way about you. This is actually one of the most courageous acts that you can do as a human being, especially in this climate, especially with how serious the world is taking everything. And, and people that know me really well, I don't know if I have this. Yeah, I have the book on me right here. Is This is like my my journal that is my my daily journal that I do my mini why exercise in, which we're going to talk about in Playful Prosperity. So, um, but, but my big why is, on, is, is inside the cover. And it's my big why here is written. It's to eradicate the belief that we have to be serious to be successful and to replace that belief with the truth that self-leadership and playful joy is the key to prosperity. So I have to be courageous in showing up and saying, this is what I believe. Each of us has to be courageous in showing up despite the fact that it may look like a taboo or people may look at you weird. It's because they wish they felt the courage inside themselves, that they had the bravery inside themselves. They had the permission that they think they need that they actually don't need to show up even 5% of the way that, that you are, the people like you and people like Jen are showing up in the world. So it is our duty if we want to rise, the, you know, raise the collective consciousness and, and overall happiness of the planet, if we want to add to humanity, we have to be courageous to not sit back and hold back our playfulness because nobody else is doing it. And instead to really, instead of being a stand in, be a stand out and fucking play your ass off, no matter what it looks like to other people. I, I, I love that. And there's so much in that, that um, when you do that, when you're playful, you give other people permission to do that too, right? Like um, when, when you see someone doing something, it's like, Oh, I can do that. Cool. Like I'm going to do more of that. And I think the, and not to get too much into politics, but but when you think about the climate today um, and it's like, what do you want for the future? Do you want a world that is serious and like like that is embodied in, in figures right now that that are not super exciting? Um, or like, do you want to live in a world of joy and playfulness and creativity and knowing that like the actions that you take are going to create one of these two things? Yes. And it may be here now, but if you want this other one, then like take a deep breath, do something fun or, 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 or you know, it doesn't even have to be like this crazy, playful fun, but just orient yourself towards joy and towards spreading that. Um, and, and it's going to take those courageous actions to create this world. And if this is what we want, then it, it's on each individual person to contribute to it. Like the, the collective society is only the, the collection of decisions that we're making as individuals. Um, and I, I was talking with someone, it was a podcast a couple months ago, right after the election. And I said that I was excited when Trump got elected because I thought if there's never been a more clear signal that your answers, the solutions are not gonna come from somebody else, from, from, from out there, that we need to like step into this self-leadership which you talk about so well in prison break like like here's a signal <laughs> like do it own own your own experience create the world that you want to live in and if enough people i love that scene at the end of finding nemo um i think the first one where they're fishing and dory and nemo are in the net with all the fish and the fish are like ah and the net keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and then somebody i i I don't remember which, whether it's Nemo, I think it's Nemo because that's that's how they would write the movie, right? right? He's like, no, like, come on, everybody, swim down. And once everybody all starts swimming in the same direction, the collective power of the fish like breaks the fishing boat. So they all mm -hmm. escape the net when they're when they're all moving together. And when we're moving in different directions and complaining and da 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 da, da that doesn't have any power. But if we all align ourselves together in, in this one direction of like, this is the world that I want to see, it, and it's 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 created, it's playful, it's fun, it's joyful, like let's do that. I'm going to swim towards that. Hopefully enough people swim towards that, that it creates this 
massive, powerful fishing, fishing boat breaking <laughs> force. Dude, I, I love that. And it's, I feel like, I feel like even as we're talking about this, because this is the first public conversation I've had with anybody really like at length about playfulness. And I feel like as we're talking about it, it really is, there is a potential for a movement here. Like they're, they're really, to me, there truly is the potential for a playfulness movement. I mean, well, yeah, and movement, like literally and figuratively, a playfulness. Okay, hold on. Do you think that if I play Bruno Marsh for like another minute that I'll, that we'll get like totally screwed? <laughs> I love sure. that movement, right? Like. <laughs> like. <laughs> okay sorry we're back the the you, you can't sit still and play no right like like it so the, a movement <laughs> that's great it's perfect. I love it. Well, I just, I just, I feel like there's such a movement and I feel like the example you talked about with Finding Nemo, there's so many people that want to be a part of this movement, right? They want to be a part of this movement, but they sit off on the sidelines waiting for somebody else to go first, right? And I get that. Wrong. It, yeah, exactly. And pointing out what's wrong or they're just, or they're just quiet or they're just afraid to say anything. And, and it's like, it's, and I wrote, I wrote about this in Prison Break too, is like the, the whole bystander thing, right? Like people, there are so many people who, you know, you'll see a car accident and you'll see all these bystanders standing around doing nothing, right? And, and it's for whatever reason, it's not, this is not a moral or ethical thing, but like they're afraid or they don't know what to do or like they're, you know, whatever's going on. But a lot of times when one person rushes to the aid of the person in the car accident, all of a sudden these other bystanders start running up too. So like it is your responsibility, you, Michael, and you, everybody else who's watching this to, to go first, right? To really, truly go first and not wait for somebody else. And if you think you're going to look stupid and be by yourself, you won't because there's people like us in the world and we're going to celebrate you. We're going to help build you up and help you do more of this. But like, I'm really feeling that this is truly like a time for us to suspend our fucking beliefs about the way the world has to work and the way business has to look and the way everything has to look. And just play for a little while because what's the worst that can happen? There's there's a comic strip that I use at the end of my talks a lot, and it, it's this comic strip by a guy named Joel Pet, and he created it for a global uh, a global climate change summit. And it, it's this really funny comic, and it's the, this guy up on stage, and he's like pointing out how, you know things on the on the the PowerPoint that says like you know um, clean air and better jobs and you know a healthier future for our kids yada yada yada. And this one guy stands up in the audience and says. But what if it's, what if we're all wrong and none of this actually helps uh, the planet and we're doing this for nothing? And it's like, but dude, like it has to help. Like it can't get any worse than it is now. Like do something fun. And I just butchered that comic. It's way funnier when you look at it. But 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 it truly is. It's like, can it really hurt to bring a little more playfulness into our world? And I want to just check in with a few people here. Irene says, yeah, I'm absolutely in play, a playfulness in dance. Absolutely. Um, Ariane had said before, we need to balance our hustle with chill, hashtag hustle to chill ratio. Absolutely. And that's the thing is like, I think work ethic is extremely important. I have a very strong work ethic and I get more work done when I'm in this service-based, playful, creative, loving, relaxed place than I ever do when my mind is scattered and I'm multitasking and I'm being serious and I'm thinking this is my only line in the play and, and that I have to nail it on this one time or I'm going to be screwed for life. I just don't perform as well. Yeah, and, and people are always asking me, like, how do you do all the things that you're doing? Um, because it, it, I mean, it looks like an insane kind of workload of projects and things to be focusing on. But it's, it's, I'm, I'm playing a little bit, you know, I'm taking care, I'm doing that, that chill. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny. You, and and it, thanks again for, for, you know, the, the celebration of, of me earlier. But one of the things that I love doing is, after a performance or a or a speech or whatever, where it's 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 moving, um, I love that for being that first clap. Yeah, because like like everyone wants to clap. Yes, everyone's feeling something, and if one person claps, then all of a sudden everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm like, I'm I'm just gonna send one out here. We'll see, we'll see, um, and then you know, but. That signal of like, okay, there's one. Yeah, it's okay to clap. Let's celebrate this person. Yeah. And just being willing to be that person. 
being because because even if even if you were the one and this is the thing is like we don't start the movement to get people to join us we start the movement because it's we can't not right because we just love it so if you were to start a clap and nobody else clapped then like that's your opportunity to clap as loud as you fucking can because now you have to clap on behalf of everybody else that's not clapping right so it's like no matter what you do you win you can't lose when you're playful, you can, you can get crazy fucking looks from people and they're going to go home and tell their spouse about you. And they're hoping their spouse says what a crazy ass. So that way they can convince themselves they would have been crazy to do the same thing. Although they really wanted to do the same thing. Like all that stuff can happen. And I'm, and I'm really getting now. And, and I really didn't know this before. I truly didn't. And it's such, it's so cool for me to see this now is that so much of the best feedback I've gotten from people in playful prosperity so far has been thank you for creating the space and giving me the permission to do what I already know how to do. Like I, I love, I don't take offense at all to people saying like, Oh, I already know how to be playful, but I just didn't know how to bring it into my world. And now I have some examples, not just for me, from everybody in the group of how to bring more of that into my life, into my work. Like having the permission and the space to do that to me, I'm realizing is like one of the biggest benefits of the program. So I'm, I'm grateful that that exists. Absolutely. And, and it's been it's been incredible to experience that. Um, and like, I mean, I, I, I obviously like had some playfulness coming in, but I feel like my level of play has just been been up leveled. Um, just seeing like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to have more fun. <laughs> totally. We're like a secret society right now. Like we are we're like doing like the, you know, the underground swell of playfulness that's just gonna like burst up through the, the ground and nobody's gonna be able to handle us and they're all gonna go into hiding, which is fine. And then just the playful people will be left. Um, so so I, I, I would, go ahead, yeah. One one real quick, um, just, to, just to circle back on this idea that like people want to play, right? Like no, the, the, the I mean, there's the cool kids who are sitting in the corner of the playground like, nah, I'm too cool to play, right? But like, Lots of people like they want to be picked on a team for the basketball game or, or they want to be called, you know, in, in, in Red Rover. Like they want to be the person that gets like run over. Like people want to do it. <laughs> um, maybe back to that like default state, like our default state is like we want to be playing. And so it's like giving people more of, of what of what they want. <laughs> yeah. And if and if we knew and this is one of these like, you know, prison break questions that, that I talk about, if we knew that we were unconditionally love supported and accepted no matter what how would we show up and and that's like that's the question so if anybody watching this is like i really want to be playful but i just feel like it's it's not going to be accepted somebody people aren't going to understand me if you knew that you were completely 100 percent accepted supported and unconditionally loved no matter what how would you show up what would be the best version of you that could show up at any given moment not now and forever we don't do all or nothing that's that's prisoner talk mm -hmm. but just in this moment if you knew that you were fully accepted, how would you show up? And to me, it's like, that's just so freeing. I can show up however I want. And maybe that means sometimes I show up playful and sometimes I show up really melancholy or sometimes I show up you know, tired. I can show up however I want, but it's really how I want to show up in that moment. It's not guided by trying to manage other people's perceptions of me. And, and, and yeah. And if you're not knowing that it's not about you, <laughs> right? Like, totally. and, and, and saying having compassion for that. Like, okay, I'm not accepted, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm accepting myself. Yeah. Ours, but that, yeah. Seems, that seems like a whole nother. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is it like, and, and that's why there's truth in the, if I knew I was always loved and accepted because you are always loved and accepted and supported. It may not be in the way that you think it should, like it may not be the way that you think it should look. It may not be from the people that you'd like it to be from. But when we slow down and look at this, I mean, hell, I can say right now that I am being fully supported by this chair and I'm being fully supported by the ground underneath it. And I'm being fully supported by the beams that are keeping this building up that allow me to sit here. So like, it may not be the exact way you're thinking, not you, you, but per the proverbial you, it may not be the way you're thinking you're being supported, but you're being supported. It may not be the way you think you're being loved or the person that you think should be loving you, but you are loved and supported and, and, and unconditionally accepted at all times. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, so so how can people keep in touch with you and follow your work and what you're up to? And and I don't know, I don't know how much you want to share about like some of the stuff we talked about in the last coaching call. I know I know you're kind of still making some cool connections on some things, but whatever you want to share about what you have coming up, dude, I'd love for you to do that. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I think I think like given given everything that we've been talking about, like now, uh, a, a large part of my focus is going to be like engaging with playful prosperity. And so, <laughs> joining us in playful and and you did not just so people know, like he did not ask me to say this. Where's my credit card? Um, but like like playing together in this program, um, that's certainly one way. And I've got I've got my my website. Uh, michaelbalshan.com, which for people that can't spell, go to michael.coach, and that'll take you to michaelbalshan.com. Um, and then I'm at mbalshan on, on Twitter and Instagram. I'm doing some fun stuff there. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to go into the stuff that we chatted about before, which is this, for me, the thing that I've been most excited about lately is, uh, is, is really um, not death, but but coming to grips with the fact that we're dying and like, that's how the story is going to end. And, and given that, given that, that like, we know that's in the future, how can we really celebrate the journey and have fun um, and, and, and use the time that we do have in a way that we're proud of and is making an impact um, and really leaning into that. And it's, it's been interesting because we had this call last week, maybe where, where I had that, that clarity and looking back at my journals from the past, say two years, uh, I, I, things come to me and I just draw them. Cause I don't like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. I just draw it. I don't know what it means. Yeah. Um, and looking back and, and, and how much everything has led up to, to that idea of like, given that we know we're going to die, how can we have fun? How can we zoom out and see like, this is the big picture. And then that, that makes it free and liberating to make choices in the moment. So I actually think I'm going to, that's going to be like the book that I'm writing is going to be something on um, like growing, growing up um, or, or, or so, something along that that idea, and I don't. Obviously, it's like work in progress, so it's not it's not super well articulated yet. Um, but I'm I'm playing with it, and and uh, we'll see what it turns into. Dude, I mean, just just the theme of that, like when when you when you started talking about that on our our coaching call, and and you were talking about you know, and and Michael has done an incredible amount of study in, in all different types of modalities, not just the self-help and psychology stuff, but so many other seemingly unrelated things just in general. He's a, he's like a, he's like a walking game of jeopardy. Um, and, and he just <laughs> Well, my, um, my favorite Harvard courses, which I, I majored in economics and psychology, my favorite courses were the extra, the like electives of yeah. the science of time, the philosophy of quantum mechanics uh the human organism <laughs> like lights very light stuff yeah you know but like like what the hell is this world we're living in how does it work on a nuts and bolts level and what does that mean for me as i move through it yeah i love that and i and i love that you're bringing you know so so to anybody who says oh well i really can't bring playfulness to the kind of work i do michael's bringing playfulness to the talk the discussion about death like is there any is there any discussion besides like politics and religion that makes people squirm more than talking about death. And he wants to bring playfulness. And again, this is not making death into a joke. And we talked at length about this. He was very clear. It, it was again about that sincerity. It was about enjoying the path. It's about, you know, since death is inevitable, um, we sh we have the opportunity to really play with the time that we have here. And, and the way he's going to do that and distilling all the wisdom that he has and just bringing his spirit, it's just something that I would I would definitely invite everybody to be on the lookout for because Michael is just going to be blowing up the world in a good way. Not like I, I hope that like National Security Administration is not watching us now. But... Yeah, the goal is to not blow up the world. <laughs> blow up the world with love. Like, let's. Let's knowing knowing that like blowing up the world is death of everybody, right? right. And and how can I take the fact that I'm going to die and I'm an individual and and use that time in such a way that like delays the death of all of us? Yeah. Um, and and I think that when people are freaking out today, it and it's like oh the world's going to da, 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 da. you know it's like it's like they're thinking we're going to hit this hard stop, yeah. um, and and our collective death is way way way. That's that's serious. That's like let's try and not not do that. Um, and so, how do we as individuals make push that further into the future? Give, give as many other people in the future, you know, children, whatever, the opportunity to also experience this this journey as confusing and crazy and, and scary and playful and fun as it is. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I, I love that. So, so I, I would like to ask you just a couple last minute questions. If you, if you have a couple more, do you have a couple more minutes? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay, cool.
Cool. Awesome. So, so love that quote and Angie, Every, everyone dies. Not everyone really lives. Oh, dude, William that's all awesome. I missed that. Oh, that's I'm William gonna... Wallace, Braveheart. So good. That is really, really good. Angie, it's so good to see you. It's, it's so cool to see people who are in playful prosperity on this call. It's like just the support is just beautiful. So, so w- you, you knew me and, and we had kind of had some interactions, but what's, what was the reason that you really joined playful prosperity? Um, yeah, I mean, one was you, um, and and just knowing that like you show up in such a way and just deliver such, such valuable insights and content. And, and I knew that like, I was going to learn and I was going to grow. Um, and I also know, like, I like to have fun, (laughs) like, like I could use more fun, more play in my life. Um, and here's an opportunity to get that, uh, and just really being excited, like, okay, Playful prosperity. I like the idea of that. Um, it, it's it was in alignment with all the things that 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 I do and that I'm excited about. And like, how can I tap into JG's wisdom and and, and his brilliance and his his play and the way that he's showing up? You know, like the the, the stuff you do with Steve Chandler, the not so serious life is like yes. Um, and and how can I? I know that I'll be able to find things that I can integrate and improve um, and, and grow both in prosperity and in playfulness as a result of, of the program. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was, a, it was an absolute no brainer. And I think it was like you, you, uh, maybe you'd like, I'd saw an email or, or a Facebook thing and I don't, I hadn't checked it regularly. And I was like, ah, ah like, like uh, am I missing this? It was like, as soon as I saw it, you were like, no, it was like, okay, done. I'm in. That's awesome, dude. And so what has been, what have you gotten out of it? So, and we haven't even officially started, like the program doesn't officially start for like another 10 days, but for people that were in early access, we had like a group coaching call and we've had Facebook live stuff and a lot of cool stuff in the Facebook group. What has been something that's been really powerful for you so far that you've gotten out of the program? Um, you know, it's even thinking back to that, that, that group call and finding this, this idea of, of, of um, playfully approaching the fact that we're all going to die or whatever. The, loose maybe loose isn't the right word but the lack of the lack of tight grip Mm. and how being able to relax a little bit and and approach enter in with a playful mindset just opens up creativity and and gives gives gave me permission to explore ideas that i may have previously marked as being like oh i can't think about that because that's I'm just not allowed to, or that's not right, or that's not not the appropriate thing to do. Um, and I think on a real, like practical day to day level, I my 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 energy, my joyfulness, my fun since joining the program has certainly increased to the point where, like, and granted, it was at a it was at a, a solid level before, <laughs> but like getting comments of like, wow, you just like your energy and and um kind of seeing this that like it coincided with that so all the things just in the facebook group of like like having fun with it has okay. has helped me to have more fun outside of it and and yeah it's a it's been a great couple of weeks i love that dude i love that so if you were going to tell somebody else they needed to be in the program like why why should people join and be a, a part of this tribe with people like me and you um what's what's the future world you want to live in like is it is it that one of seriousness and and um work and not that you know not that it's not hard work we don't we want to be doing deep work but but like do you want to live in that space or do you want to live in a space of like fun playfulness and creativity and prosperity through that right it's not like oh it's all go play hopscotch but it's like hey how can we tackle this big big challenge um and have fun in the process because (laughs) Like what? What's the point if you're if 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 you're not having fun? Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, and you're totally right. Like this is not about like just playing all day and and not having impact and income in the process. It's using play as a vehicle to increase your impact and your income. It's it's not it's not to you know demonize money and disavow deep work. It's the opposite. It opens you up to experience all those things in a totally different way. And and I think that you embody that so much in the way you show up. And, and this is you know this is totally selfish for me to have you on here because I just love being in your presence and I wanted to share you with people. And also I wanted them to see like the people that are in this program are 
total fucking badasses. Like I was telling the group earlier today, I did a Facebook live in the group this morning. If I had time to do this with every single person in the group, like to come on and do a Facebook live, I would do it because people in the group are just absolutely incredible. So I, I thank you so much for making the time to do this, for showing up the way you do. Um, I, I want to check real quick and see what other questions we had here. Um, oh, Paula says, uh, Paula says, how do I sign up for this? Ah, oh, this is so what I need. I've been fearing fun. Yeah, totally, Paula. Like this is, you know, a lot of people fear fun, especially when we've maybe been taught or grew up in a, in a household or in a world where we've been conditioned to believe that fun is supposed to be compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things I think that we're really doing a lot in this program and that people like Michael are champion, champion, championing in the world is that fun and play do not have to be compartmentalized. So the way to get on the program, there are there's three days left. I'm closing down the, the enrollment on Saturday because I'm going to be live with the group every week. And so we need to have a, a date that we all start together. Uh, so this Saturday will be the last day. So three more days. Uh, you can go over to playfulprosperity.com, www.playfulprosperity.com. All the information's there. Uh, and there's a bunch of really cool stuff. And just a bunch of really cool people, like even beyond all the training that I'm going to give and the live calls and all that, just the tribe. I really, if I didn't feel comfortable saying this, I wouldn't say it. The tribe is fucking incredible. Like it's, it's just amazing. The people that are in there, I wake up every day and I'm so excited to get in the Facebook group so I can see what people have posted overnight. Um, Angie says uh, more corporations need to adopt this mindset. Uh, they're all about the seriousness and somber, inflexible, stale attitudes. Bringing more fun in the workplace will be huge. Yeah, Angie, totally. I, I love that. Michael, were you going to say something? Yeah. The, um, even going back to like the idea of, of, of deep work and creating and, 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 and money and all that stuff. It's like uh, uh, a playful spirit. And I think we talked earlier about fixed mindset versus growth mindset in the work of Carol Dweck and, and, and how that's shown to be a predictor of success and achievement. But like giving yourself the permission to like, okay, I've worked really hard and this didn't go so well. Ugh, that's really bad versus like, okay, how can I like use that as data to iterate and improve in the future? So in a corporation, corporations got changes they need to make rather than being like, oh, like we're terrible. It's like, okay, what are those changes and how can we, how can we implement them and get better over time? And approaching with a, from a place of playfulness almost gives you the flexibility to say, what I did previously wasn't working. And that's okay because I'm going to, I'm going to get better and then I'm going to get better again. I'm going to get better again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I love that. And, and playfulness too, I think is something where if everybody is, is adopting like a playful spirit in a corporation, I think it also facilitates and fosters more trust. Because if everybody knows that it's okay to play, then everybody will bring all of their ideas to the table and everybody will be willing to suspend their own beliefs about what's possible to say, well, cool, tell me more about this idea you have. Because in my mind, I feel like it wouldn't work, but what the hell do I know? We're all here just playing together anyway. So there, there's all these deep levels. Like it's not, it's not about, and this is something that I have, I have, you know, challenges with sometimes with my corporate clients. This is not about like touchy feely, like, you know, woo woo stuff. This is looking at life through the lens of effectiveness. And it's just more effective to play and to be lighter, to be more relaxed. You don't have to become an emotional intelligence expert. You don't have to meditate. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It's just more effective. And I think that's exactly what you're saying. I yeah, they, they've done they did research on optimism. So companies that are optimistic are more successful. And that um, I can't remember that learned optimism. Martin Seligman, so MetLife, NBA, are successful. Michelle Guyan and... Um, Sean Acor. Sean was one of my my TFs at, at Harvard and positive psychology. Oh, no way. That's awesome. They've been working with all these organizations and their data on like when a company is positive, how that translates into the bottom line, like into the company being more successful, more profitable. So like it's not just this, hey, we're, we're saying this, this is like fun, but it's like there's data right now that says when you do this, you're better. Um, and and really like going back to that empiricalness of like it. it it works and it's, it's proven to work. It's not just like ideas. Yeah, exactly. It's not, yeah, it's not just pop culture crap. Um, okay, Roz says, as a child of Holocaust survivors, uh, this group and Jason have helped me to process the concept that having fun and play in life are perfectly okay. Yeah, baby. Roz is in playful prosperity as well. Love that, Roz. Thank you for sharing that. That's really, that's that's incredible. And um, wow, I don't, I, I just kind of want to sit there with that for a second. Um, thank you. Thank you, Roz. That, that's really special. I love that. Um, thank you, Angie, for sharing the website. Uh, Tasha says, morning from New Zealand. I'm a great believer in fun and work and life. Love playful. That's awesome. So, so happy to hear that, Tasha. So thank you, everybody who, who showed up live. Uh, everybody who's on the replay. Again, you can check out playfulprosperity.com. If it calls to you and you're inspired, sign up, join the tribe. You'll be with people like Michael over here. Wait, I'm, I'm putting it the wrong way. There you go. Okay, Michael over there. 
And uh, oh, can we? Oh, let's do the. Can we do the hand thing? Can we? Can wait, we is it this hand? side? Pre- the other side. Other side. Other side. Wait. Go all, all the way over. Wait. Uh, over more. 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 Oh, it's like window level. Like we're in jail. <laughs> Dude, you rock. Nice. You're amazing. Everybody. Nice. Oh, wait, wait. Nice. Fist bump. Boom. I, our, our fists just like went into each other. Uh, make sure you check out Michael.coach. Do I have that right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Check out Michael.coach. I don't know that you need a www. I don't know. So All the the WWW. These days. I'm so I'm so old school. Look at me, WWW, like an old person. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions about the program, just hit me up on CompuServe and AOL. Uh, my Prodigy account uh, expired, uh, but but hit me up on CompuServe. And <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for your, your great comments. And Michael, you are a badass. We're gonna play us out with some Bruno Mars. I think I think it's